Martin, so uh, now that the writer strike's been going on for a while, uh, and by the way, I really enjoyed reading the blog post that you wrote about it. Um, we obviously, not just us, but uh, people in the industry in general and, and, and end users can't ignore uh, the presence of AI and machine learning uh, in, in many different industries and obviously primarily in, in, in ours like media and entertainment. Um, so with that being said, uh, what do you think customers should, and, and, and vendors, of course, should be looking uh, and how should they be potentially preparing uh, for this uh, onset of, of AI uh, ML within, uh, within their workflows, within their day-to-day -day functionality? What kind of planning they should be doing going into the future? Yeah, it's an interesting uh, issue right now, for sure. Um, you know, the fact that it's coming to light right now and the writer strike brings it uh, a little bit more into focus for the industry. Um, you know, this is on everybody's mind. But realistically, it's, you know, as we're seeing how that's affecting our external world, how does it actually come home and affect the 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 internal workings of our workflows? Or, you know, how do we better prepare for it? How do we leverage it? How does it make things more seamless? Um, and uh, more efficient, really, is the best word for it, right? So uh, preparing for those type of workflows, it's really, I would say it comes down to what's the best method of, um, uh, for your data, like utilizing like what what's AI's strengths, right? And, and essentially, the, I would say that's enriching the data about the data, right? Like getting the metadata, like, like well honed, right? Like understanding what's going on in the picture in the frame, it's talking about the objects so that you could, uh, better access that content later uh, and understand where all of it is, right? You know, especially as people have so much content these days, right? This is, you know, it's been an ongoing problem, but it's now obviously exacerbated by the multiple exabytes and zettabytes or whatever is out there at this point. So understanding that uh, where it is and how to monetize it, I think is the best thing. So what does that look like in the workflow? Um, to me, and at least in my opinion, that's having some kind of like underlying um, structure of object, right? So like an object oriented type of infrastructure and then having the embedded metadata that's in those objects, right? Because that's that's inherently what makes objects so good besides its durability, but it's actually able to, to attach the file and the metadata together rather than having separate database that you have to manage um, or gets obscured by other asset managers on top of it. So keeping it seamless from start to finish I mean, at least in my opinion, I think that'd be the best way to, to move forward and leverage the AI, right? So when that doesn't matter whether you're talking cloud or on-prem either or hybrid, it doesn't make a difference. You're, you're, you know, you're trying to keep yourself future-proof. Future right, right, yeah, right. Um, and you, exactly as you said, it, it's, all, it's all about optimizing the workflow and that's all about, at the end of the day, it's all about time and money, right? Especially in the, in the media industry, right? Ability to remonetize the content, ability to do it quickly. So using that rich metadata uh, that's that are, again, probably going to be AI driven uh, mm -hmm. going into the future, right? Take, taking away, um, you know, some of the involvement of the, of the human presence, right? And it, it's a bit controversial to some potentially, but right. it, it honestly cannot be ignored because uh, certain things, particularly, you know, this, these bits, bits and pieces within media workflows it can right. be absolutely automated by the AI. Well, and, and that's the interesting part, though, is in that sense, in terms of like enriching metadata, you don't want a human to do it. Realistically, the human actually introduces the error uh, in that process, right? Because they're going to have their inherent biases to what they think that media means. And then so right. later down the road, maybe that person's not that company anymore. And you're trying to search these fields and, and it doesn't make sense to you or whatever, a different person, right? You're like, well, why is this metadata? Like this, this, this isn't how I see this footage. Right, so it's, right. um, yeah, you, you kind of want to have like the, the least, I don't know, you know, call it, the best words for it, but you want at least a, a machine to go through it and, and have some sort of universal language that's built to these clips. So it's most applicable to you and, and technically to the machine later, because more than likely you're going to be using that inferencing to be finding these, these files, right. That, that sure. go down the road. So. Yeah. And the great thing about these, uh, the, the engines, obviously, they can be retrained and they can be optimized, like you said, they can be owned sure. specifically for the content that uh, that the end user is producing. So. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so uh, I think we'll end on this note for, for this episode and uh, maybe we can talk a little bit deeper into the actual bits and pieces of the 
AI workflows within the mini on the next steps. Sounds good.